Uh, now, the new album, uh, Into the uh, Wild Life. Um, uh, are you living the wild life these days? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. We are in, into the wild life. <laughs> We're in the middle of it. Really? We finished a bottle of... What is it? Absinthe. Absinthe last Oh! Time. <laughs> why? I don't know no. why. It, it was, was no reason. It wasn't, it wasn't real, though. It was just... It was the... Uh, it was you know, in Paris, it was real. Why, well, I don't understand why you think it, it wasn't well, a real bottle. Because, <laughs> like, I didn't see any fairies or nothing. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, but you it was just good. naturally always see fairies. But it was the absentee. The fairies went away. The, uh, right. The fairies oh. went away. Oh. Uh, cool. I just had a little bit of white enough too much, I guess. <laughs> nice. nice. But also, you... you uh, uh, the producer, Jay Joyce... Yes. Uh, what is it that he uh, brought to the album, and why did you go with uh, with him? It was, you know, it was actually our A and R guy's idea. He he was like, "Why don't you go meet Jay Joyce?" We're like, "Who?" <laughs> we hadn't heard of him, and and we went and hung out with him, and kind of told him we met him at his church, and just said, "Yeah, we we kind of want to bridge this gap between like our live show and the record." You know, how do you? If we knew how to do that, we'd do it ourselves. And we were trying, we were trying to get that energy and that, like the yeah. personality With, of our without doing a live and, record, but but have the record, uh, well, you know, have some type of human element to it, and and based on performance and not perfection. Well, so. and yeah, and he was like the only producer in the lineup that when we were deciding who to go with, actually flew out to see us live in uh, one of our shows. I think Chicago or something. He yeah. came out yeah. and saw us. Uh, we were headlining this. Uh, this festival or something, and uh, and he was like, you know, he saw the show and he's like, uh huh, like, you know, and it, yeah, it came up to all of us. He's like, you know, that's we need to, you know, capture this. So and we did it that way. We just sat in a circle for a lesson, played all the basic tracks together live, you know. And it, it was cool it was too. He's not he, he's not really a rock producer too. He's not like uh, you know, he kind of does more alternative stuff. Yeah. And, and also he does uh, he does you know, country is his bread and butter. You know, that's how he. That's how he makes a living. But uh, he was like so stoked to do a hard rock record. He was like, "Yeah!" It was funny that know? night at the the show. He was like, he watched your drum solo and he was like, "We need to have that, man." We need he to, wanted to put a drum solo on the record. Yeah, and I'm like, record. "Cool!" It was like, you know, one of my favorite records is Led Zeppelin too, and Moby Dick's on yeah. there, and I, you know, so I'm like, "Ooh, I want to yeah. do that," you know. It's like, yes, finally. I, forgot. I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he he's just a super vibey guy, and uh, he was funny too. That I, was exciting, I think. Um, just just to sort of have that, you know, to to meet to meet him and and. Uh, and and sort of realize that that's what kind of duty is because that's that's the kind of guy you want in the studio mm. is is the vibe guy mm. you know like no that's cool. What means the most to me on this record is that you can hear, like, the the, the newness and the um the uh the spontaneity that we never get on a record because usually when we're making records we have everything already planned out all the songs already done the arrangements before you walk into the studio so the fact that we like went in with like maybe maybe eight songs you know that were like complete and, and even those were like oh no no we're not going to do it that way we're going to do it this way you can hear that excitement and yes yeah, fearlessness almost that. you know he was confident enough to just you know throw caution to the wind and it was cool while we were recording the record live, the four of us in in the room. You'd uh, he'd sneak around and uh, just start playing on the organ or something, and play this part, and I'd hear it in my headphones. I'm like, yeah, like now we're we're you know <laughs> we're we're playing jazz together. It's fun, you know. <laughs> cool. Uh, there's one song, Dear Daughter. Anything you can say about that song? It's about RJ. <laughs> it was originally called My Son's a Son of a Bitch. <laughs> we decided that was the one. I'm like, ah, you know, dear daughter. Yeah, that's a little bit more. Family. <laughs> um, you know, this is a, a subject that, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I we grew up with um, a very supportive mother, and, like, you know, we decided to start a rock band, so it's, and she actually yeah, was they, like, yes, do that, go for like, it. Can we help? Can so, we be yeah, involved? Can I help? And they were, actually, for a while. They toured with us for a so, while. So, so for me, this was, uh, you know, we get to speak to a lot of young girls and, 
and a lot of them do have those supportive parents, but a lot of them don't. So um, I think this was my way, at, lyrically I, at least, you know, just passing that on. As in, like, if, if I were, if and when I were to have a daughter, you know, what would, would I be passing th these words on to her? And um, I don't know, it's a strange song, you know. Strange but strange song, but a great message. Yeah. And I think it, you know, although it says, Dear Daughter, I feel like that's, that's uh, great. That's just great advice for for anyone. Yeah. Um, you know, be yeah. be a, a you know a young kid or, or anyone in a, in a spot where they're like, well, man, I'm in just the pits right now. Yeah. What the know, hell's my life gonna be like in right? ten years? Yeah. I, you know. So it, it's just good sound advice for for anyone mm. uh, kind of trying to find their way. Thanks, guys. But but <laughs> do, you, do you as a band do you, do you like do you ever feel like I don't know responsibility as you say you meet a lot of young girls and boys and, and uh, in any way do you, do you feel like with the music and sending a message and, and things like that and being a positive like being positive role models for for I think fans? a lot of that has has leached its way into uh, especially lyrically for me but mm -hmm. what what we've noticed is that really um, the more that we're not really trying to be that. <laughs> the, the more that we don't try to be a role model and the more that we're just like, we're just honest and yeah. being ourselves um, and erring more on that side, I think that it almost becomes more like we are a role model. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a very strange I, situation, I, but. I think it's even more powerful, uh, uh, you know, for anyone to, uh, to listen to something and, and relate to it if it's coming from a very genuine, honest place. And yeah. I think that with every record we do, we get a little bit more and more closer to, you know, and more fearless to be completely honest about what we write and what we, you know, <coughs> talk about. Right. Also, you got a, you got a photo book coming out. Yeah. Uh, Rob yeah. Fenn, who's also doing, <laughs> he's also doing a bit with Dream Theater, I think, and mm -hmm. he worked with Rob <clears throat> Zombie and, and all that. Um, where did that idea come from? Was it his idea? That, did he approach you, or? Um, well, he just jumped out at the beginning of the last album cycle for almost a year, just hanging yeah. out, taking pictures of us yeah. off stage, on stage, and Great we were guy. like, we got to do yeah. something with this. And he kept coming back over the next few years at the studio, and we were, you know, mm -hmm. at a show if we were in his area or he was in our area, and and uh, like, yeah, we got to we got to do something. And he's good. he's so good at it. He's mm -hmm. just like, check it out. I'll, you know, I can put it together like this. Like that looks. Awesome. Awesome. He's, he's like really getting pretty famous in the photography mm -hmm. world. Like I see his pictures. I see more and more people are talking about yeah. him. You know, what's it like working with Rob? It's <laughs> 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 like living in Utah. <laughs> Magical. <laughs> Magical. Take that however you. He's not a polygamist, don't worry. That was kind of the idea all along. Was I mean, in part, it, it was great having him out just for the in instant social media point of it, he was yeah. constantly po posting on stuff. On the band, and, Facebook, and, and Twitter. And but yeah, the, the, in the long run, somewhere down the road, we've, we kind of always wanted to get to something out. Something. And yeah, yeah we're, we're excited to, it'll be, it'll be nice to look back at that. Have our, I'm gonna put it on my like, coffee table. Coffee table, yeah. <laughs> memory book. Cool. Uh, also, uh, Sweden. I mean, Swedish fans have really embraced you guys since I think the first time you so came amazing. here. Um, <laughs> so just what is it about hailstorm in Sweden? It's like a long it's love affair. It's the <laughs> yeah. it's storm. It's so metal. <laughs> no, but you, you've done very well here. Yes. Oh dear. I think because they relate to our name uh, in relation to the weather. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. You guys have great <laughs> support with Bandit, you know, right, and, yeah. and it's just uh, the label here is so cool, and it's a good music scene here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good, it's a good home for rock and country. roll too. You know, people, it's rock and roll's alive and well here. Do you listen to any Swedish bands? Hell yeah, yeah. Soil work, yeah. Oh, yeah. love soil work and. Uh, yeah, who else? Uh, Abba. <laughs> of course. Every day. Of course. Of course. Every day before the show. <laughs> Europe. We oh, just heard Europe on the way over. We yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. the basic food group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you say has been um, um, a high point in your career so far? You may answer individually. The fact that we're still here. Yeah. A yeah. huge high point. <laughs> Huge. I, I think right now the high point was is being on tour, playing new songs, and having completed a record that, in my opinion, and probably your guys too, is like our best work. 
Oh, we got the Bandit Award. There's, there's, Incredible. There's two came out to get it. It's and, like 50 uh, pounds. Yeah, so it was in your backpack on the way home. Oh, my God. Almost got confiscated yeah, right, in New Jersey. You bludgeon someone. Yeah, I was like, I got to take this to my supervisor. I was like, okay. Whatever. You know, he's yeah. like, how do you do you know? TSA. It's a 30-pound fist. <laughs> <laughs> Holding a rock. That was really cool. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's pretty mind blowing just getting to come over here so far away from home and see that so many people know who we are and like what we do. It's crazy. You know? mm. Dream come true. Yeah. Um, how do you look at your uh, first album today? Um, do you look back at it and and thinking, oh, we should have changed that, we should have done that, or we're just really happy with don't, it, or don't really yeah. look back. It's yeah, a, no, I don't listen to it at all. It's a, a moment in time, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, you I'm know, I'm proud of it. It's Absolutely. part of our growth. If we hadn't made that record, we wouldn't have been able to make the second one, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we could have done this record back then. No like, way. like we wouldn't have been ready for it, and and nobody would have gotten it. <laughs> You know, so it was a good base. Hmm. Hmm. Good place to start. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the band in five years from now? I mean, you've gone from just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, hopefully visiting Sweden in August. Yeah. Hopefully. Be big enough to... Not I mean, in five somewhere. years, though. Or anytime, anytime. To, be, to be honest, is as long as we're coming back yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. In five years, based on our release schedule, we should have a new record out and um, be finishing up that album cycle. Hopefully still going yeah. up. Yeah. It's a night, nice little Still slow the ride same. For us. Still, still making carry. the same fart yeah. jokes that we've always made. You know, <laughs> acting like idiots. Maybe I'll be smart <laughs> enough not to drink a bottle of ab absinthe or order a bottle of absinthe before. What's uh, what's been the uh, what's been the most fun tour so far? I mean, you've toured a lot and with a lot of bands and That's tough all yeah. over the world. And this, I <laughs> this think, has been, been our like best trip across seas. You know, like we've been having so much fun out here, and the crowds. It's, been it's crazy that we're over halfway done right now. Like we've had so much fun. We had a really good time with Evanescence and Chanel yeah, that tour in twenty twelve. Uh, Amy's so cool on her band. We just had a blast with those guys. Uh, oh, that was too much fun. Amy got yeah. sang with us. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that that was a, that was a fun one. I don't know. There's been a bunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's hard to say. We have a good time. One of our first <laughs> biggest tours on our first album cycle was uh, the Uproar Festival tour with uh, fun, Disturbed, really Avenged Sevenfold, Stone Sour, Hell Yeah. Uh, airborne and Vinnie Paul made margarita parties and yeah, you know, that was just a really fun. Everyone was super cool. Everyone got along really good. We did. Oh, we got off tour. With, we we got to do some touring with Eric Church too, who is like a mate, which is weird because we're not a you know, yeah. putting a rock band it, on a country tour. But again, like everyone's so it, cool. It, if you think about it this way, ninety percent of our life is touring. So yeah. it's kind of like asking, so what point in time <laughs> in your life was coolest? What was your favorite breath of air? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't know. This one. one. This one. No, this one. No, this one. No. Um, yeah. Everyone's been super cool, and I think if you put good energy out, you get it back. So, sure. You know, everyone we tour with is just, you know, we really haven't toured with many, you know, many assholes. So. Right, right. Um, do you yourselves, do you, do you have like um, like one Hailstorm song that kind of sums up the band, or...? Ooh. I like it heavy. That's tough. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, like it it's tougher for me, so you guys should talk amongst yourselves. It, you know, it's hard because... Sick individual. Oh, that's a good one. Mm. I, I, I like, you know, as far as what represents me, I like spread myself out on a record. And it's not mm. really about one song, it's about an album. So it's like, it's like, oh, do I like this softer ballad? That's a part of me, too. But I like sick individual. I like I am the fire because it's like raucous. It's like ah, I don't know, you know. It's nice getting have both. I worlds. love love bites. That's a good one too. Yeah, love, <laughs> love bites and and, so and, and still like uh, miss, the miss the misery is just. I, I feel like that'll be that song's gonna still be fun to play. We, we've been having just, a lot of fun with that. Just one. by crowd reaction alone, uh, they they always get so Ch so excited, jacked. so chuffed. When we go into that song, and uh, yeah, I bet you, I, I feel like ten years from now is still going to be fun to play if if we're going in ten years, which I, I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah, we'll still well, be we, like, ten drag, years from now. Let's we drag Lizzie into the ground. Yeah, all the touring. Liz, yeah. Yeah. We're like a bunch of cockroaches. You can't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final one. Uh, having your own uh, signature guitar 
Is that like the ultimate acknowledgement? It, it's pretty fantastic, yeah. I have to say. Um, she totally cried when the first time. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh! Was it was there. really neat. My baby! Um, because, you know, you, I, I mean, I, when I first started getting into guitar, um, um, I had always loved Gibsons, and that was like a goal, was to like buy my first Gibson, you know, and save up money. And then you always wonder, you know, as a teenager, you're like, man, if, if, I, if I ever had like a signature guitar, like my idols have signature guitars. I what mean, would it be like? like? Yeah. And so I'm kind. Of, I had it all already planned out for years. So when they approached me, they're like, "So you know, take some time and figure out what you want to do." I'm like, "Oh no, no, I'll have it to you by Monday. Here, <laughs> you know." Um, and what's what's the coolest thing to me now is is seeing it in places and having these kids come up and with it for me to sign. It's like you're just spreading the rock and roll love. So it's it's pretty cool to be a part of. Um, you guys released the song um, I Miss Misery. Um, really well received over here. So oh, that's um, awesome. It happened quite a while ago, but we've, just, we've gone gold with it. Oh, yeah. Shit. Whoa. There we go. Fade to black.